This is Twit. Uh, all right, Amy Webb, your new book coming out in uh, just a few weeks. Are you excited? I am. Please pre-order it. I did. Um, for Too for late. legit reasons. There's a paper shortage. And so... Um, oh. Uh, Good I Lord. Think, Even paper? Yeah, there's their supply chain is all screwed up paper right now. So I my publisher has ordered... Uh, they've assured me enough books, but when my last book came out, The Big Nine, um, they ran out. A lot of bookstores ran out of books. Um, so anyway, and this is really a such a hot topic. This is going to be a bestseller. I, I think people really want to know. It's not just CRISPR. It's not just mRNA vaccines. There is stuff going on in biotech that I think is going to be as significant as James Webb, if not more so. Yeah, um, I I agree with you. It's it's. I actually think it's the most important technology of our lifetimes and and I was so intrigued by it that I wrote a book on it. Um, you know what? You and, know who else uh, uh, thinks this is going to be that important? Bill Gates. I yeah. remember even, this was 20 years ago, Bill would always take these vacations, these long vacations where he would read up on something. And even then he said, the next big thing is biotech and I need to be an expert in this. And, and very few people know this, but sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Please go ahead. Well, very few people know this, but Microsoft is actually a big player oh, in yeah. this space. Yeah. Microsoft is, is trying to figure out how to store data inside of DNA. I knew this because Esther Dyson would go with him on these trips. And she told me, yeah, we brought all of these books. We did all of this reading. And yeah, Bill Gates has been personally an investor, but Microsoft also. Um, it's a very exciting time. What do you see as the big developments that are going to happen and make a difference in our lives in the next decade or so? Yeah. Um, so first of all, it's kind of a weird term. So synthetic biology is a relatively new interdisciplinary field of science. So if you've got an engineering background, you're going to recognize parts of what you do in this form of wetware. If, you're, if you've worked in AI, in design, in circuit board creation, like um, all, all, there's a huge overlap. Um, so basically re researchers design or they redesign organisms at a molecular level to give them new purposes or to enhance them. And this, this really does change everything because in a way to make an analogy to like coding, it gives us right access to life. So, um, so you know, why is it synthetic as opposed, what, what does that mean? Yeah. Synthetic biology? So it's a good question. Um, so we're obviously using ACTG, so, so atomic Gata organic building Anybody blocks. who loves the movie Gataka knows that those are the key yeah. amino acids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yes. Uh, so, so that part's not synthetic. The, the part is, um, the reason we call it synthetic biology is because it's synthesizing um, code for, for new purposes. So it's, it's sort of sequencing and synthesizing. So if... So when Watson and Crick, uh, who totally stole and used the work of Rosalind Franklin without ever giving her any credit, and then Watson, who who was like awful, um, disparaged her publicly uh, when they built a, their first such a tragedy. I it, uh, it really is. Yeah, he, yeah. he's um, horrible, horrible, horrible. Uh, so you know they sort of built the first model, revealed the first model of DNA, and that gave others the ability to read our biological source code. So that's like read permissions, edit permissions would be CRISPR. So this is limited ability to splice and move around ACTG. Um, that, that gives us sort of a edit level permission. You can hook up a special protein to a, a guide RNA and that gets you to the right part of the cell and moves along the, the DNA it, strand it, until it, it finds the right sequence. It sounds like it's very much influenced by uh, computer technology, by digital it technology. It totally is. Yeah. It totally is. And so synthetic biology literally is like, it gives us the ability to write new code. So if you're a developer, you know, you might invent new machine learning algos or a new protocol, um, but you're, you're in a way like still sort of fundamentally tethered to the architecture of whatever, you know, the, the, the platform and the systems logic, um, which means at the end, you're still working in ones and zeros. So it's kind of the same in biology. You're still in the end using ACTG code, but if biology is the fundamental technology platform, then this gives us the ability to, to write almost like you would write in a word document or, or like, you know, terminal or says like, like pick your favorite program. Right. Um, and, and you would be able to write what you want. Um, literally send it to a printer. 
It sounds and, like and science it fiction, out. but we actually, uh, mRNA vaccines are one absolutely. of the outcomes of this. That's absolutely right. And this research has been, you know, 10 years, it's, it's going on 10 years, um, but it was a way of applying, uh, you know, they, they sequenced the, the genetic code of the virus in a very short, short amount of time. Over and a then weekend. Over right. a weekend. Right. So, <laughs> Jesus. So it, it's really remarkable, but it's also not at all remarkable that we got these vaccines so fast. And they would have been in the market faster, except for... We had to um, test them. We had to test them and, you know, supply chain. Yeah. So, but basically hey, Amy, what this can means... I, can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I know that synthetic bio biology basically allows you to repurpose organisms uh, yep. by editing long stretches of DNA versus, say, genetic editing, which would be you know much smaller sequences. How close is this to being able to not repurpose an organism, but to create an organism? Yeah. Ooh. Well, that's already that's already happened. So a guy oh, named boy. Craig Mentner. This is scary. Who's a, so there, there are some sort of figureheads in this field that are heroes of mine, and Craig Ventner is one of them. And Ventner was he, uh, the guy who just sequenced the genome. He sure, he, well, so Watson was leading a program at the government, doing it old school and basically completely unwilling to look at any new techniques or tools. Ventner is this like surfer guy, uh, ready to like thumb yeah. his nose at any, you know, like higher order government thing, comes up with a totally different way to do it. And then um, there's a great movie to be made about the race to complete yeah. the, to, to, to uncover the human genome. At any rate, um, they've already created a synthetic organism from scratch. What? And it's the Whoa. first ever, there's a bacterium and it's the first ever organism that has ever existed. It's a living thing that technically had computers as parents. And it is self-replicating. Oh, now see, um, this plays okay, right into everybody's scary. science fiction yeah. terror. So um, this is why I'm obsessed with the proto-molecule. <laughs> right? Should we be worried? <laughs> it is yeah, a proto-molecule. So it totally freaking is. And and if you've read the, the, the books... She's that talking the about the expanse. Is, um, and it's not a spoiler because it's really at the very yeah. beginning of the, of the expanse It is. Story. And then sadly, it like... It it's the disease role, that, that is the problem. But okay, go ahead. And it's... It's uh, a self-propagating organism yeah. that, you know, the, the challenge is that biology... The, 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 the interesting thing is that pretty soon, actually now, we're going to be able to... We can program biological, biological structures as they, though they were tiny computers, right? That, that's, and and this, this concept now, made I, me go down all these rabbit holes, which is how I wound up writing the book. So read the book. But I have to say that we have governmentally in the past... And, and, and as a society globally, deprecated certain kinds of research because we were, yeah. for instance, uh, cloning. Uh, 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 remember the scientist in China who said, I edited a gene and was able to eliminate, uh, I can't remember which disease. Yeah, it was AIDS. And I will tell you that in retrospect, he was basing a lot of his research on genetic enhancement. So one of the offshoots of that, like the knockoff. But that's effect. one of the things we've decided globally not to do well you can proclaim something globally but then practice very different things well, he within got your disappeared by the chinese world. government after doing it yeah uh -huh. when it becomes so easy to edit a genetic sequence as it currently is you can't uh, keep a lid no, on this I mean, so that's yeah. why i'm afraid you no longer it. need state resources yeah. to be able to do something like this yeah right so here's so so one of the things that we do in the book is there's nine nine significant risks um and one of the things that i so we, we wrote these, so I, I keep saying we, I wrote this with a, um, a friend who's a microbiologist who's got a, has done a ton of work in the space. And Andrew we, Hessel. We, yeah. Andrew Hessel. Um, so we developed some scenarios, again, it's what if, right? We're trying to figure out, you know, what, what are possible outcomes? Um, one of those outcomes, I, I was trying to figure out so obviously there's like the lab leak theory and messenger RNA at around the same time that was starting to bubble up on social media. There's an academic paper published showing a, a lot of the sequencing. Um, so the sequencing happens in the U, in your local country, but the synthesis, which is to say the printing out of stuff and sending it back, a lot of that's happening in China. Um, and the, uh, there was a team of Israeli researchers that were like, huh, I wonder if there's a way for us to inject malware into genetic code 
um, and to obscure it so that you can't detect in the transmission that anything has happened, but you would send totally an inoc- inoculus code, you know, to, to somebody in China and, and get back not an inoculus sample, but something that's potentially virulent. And they were able to, to do that. And so what that made me think of was, well, sh- you know, what happens if like that actually happens in a lab who, who do you go, like, who's in charge? So I started calling my friends at the State Department and DOD and Homeland Security. I'm calling everybody. I'm like, hey, if this actually, ha- like, I wrote this crazy scenario. If this actually happened, what then? And the answer is nobody knows because we are totally unprepared for a cyber biological attack. And it is totally plausible that something like that could happen. And by the way, you don't have to have a virus that kills millions of people for it to be horrific. You, you could invent a virus for one person. Donald Trump had a terrible security team. He left, they left behind all kinds of garbage. In fact, there was an uh, artist collective that collected a bunch of his stuff. And, Including and his auctioned, DNA, presumably, yes? Right, at the, at, uh, and others who were at WEF one year, I think, and, and put it up on, on a website, like, hey, if you want to buy these people, like, here's a fork, you can take Donald oh Trump's my you know, God. DNA. Right. So if I had that, I but could wait a minute. The very fact, so the very fact that the Secret Service should be sequestering anything with the president's DNA on it is a terrifying idea. Sure. Well, but it's again, we need to we need to change our mental models because is this legitimately can, now a possible? This is right now. Uh, listen, I could sequen. I could make, I could potentially engineer something that doesn't have to kill somebody, but it could debilitate them enough. Maybe they've got chronic diarrhea. If you've got a CEO with chronic diarrhea, suddenly you have fiduciary responsibility to tell your, tell your shareholders. And if not, could, that potentially do, runs afoul of, you know, like the, the new corporate espionage ever. could be <laughs> totally ransomware of your gut. That's absolutely right. That's what I'm talking about. So there's a ton of opportunity on the horizon, but but as with every technology, there's dual risk. It doesn't mean we don't use we, it. I mean, there's a great quote in uh, Abin. Yeah. We've crypt blocked your hearing. If you'd like it back, please send 50 Bitcoin to the following address. Oh my yeah. goodness, this What's is terrible. Yeah, I mean, What's the you're, quote? You're, Tell us what the quote is. So, so it's it's a James S. A. Corey, who's like the pen name of Daniel right. Abraham and Ty Frank, who wrote the series. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to read it. We're back it to killed the humans. Yeah. So, yes, it's my obsession. It killed humans, therefore it was a weapon. But radiation killed humans, and a medical X-ray machine wasn't intended as a weapon. Right. Right. So I mean, th- this is biology. We are manipulating it. We've got right access to humanity's source code, and we're going to do great things. You won't need e-ink in the future to change the color of your car. We'll be able to create a new type of Change the color of your skin. Sure. Did the diabetes comment earlier? There's actually work underway to turn your skin into its own pharmacy. So you'll be able to detect when you're having a a sugar episode and and automatically solve it. We may not need insulin in the future. Yeah. Okay. Wow. But- but there's all kinds of horrific risk on the horizon. And at the moment, we don't really have a plan. 